What's going on guys? Today we are going to learn how to scrape Google search results for their headlines, then analyze those headlines for sentiment to see what the general sentiment of Google headlines for any one particular search topic that we wanna search for is. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get started here. Go ahead and pull up terminal or command prompt and whatever editor you wanna to use to build this script. So first thing we're gonna do is install the packages that we need to install. There are three off the top that we wanna get. So those are text to blob, BS4, and requests. So let's go ahead and install those. Uh, BS4 and requests are gonna be used for scraping the web itself. Text blob is a sentiment analysis uh, package that we're gonna use to pass through the headlines so we can get an idea of what the general sentiment is for those packages. Okay, so it looks like those have all downloaded. Uh, just go ahead and run pip install text blob space bs4 space requests and that'll bring all those packages down for you. Okay, next up here, we are going to go ahead and create our script. So we're gonna open up a Python file called analysis.py. And again, you guys can do this in whatever text editor you want. I'm using Vim in this case. You can use that in the command line or the um, command prompt if you're on Windows or Linux as well. Uh, Vim is just an editor for specifically in the terminal, um, but it depends, whatever you guys wanna use, good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and now import these packages that we just downloaded here. So we're gonna say uh, from text blob import text blob, um, import requests, and from BS4 we're gonna import beautiful soup. Okay. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and create a class that we're gonna use for running our analysis. So again, a class is a template. So essentially we're using a class this time just to structure our code. Um, we're not gonna be reusing it just because it is a single script, but we are gonna create one just to structure our code and maintain it in a way that we want so that it's easy to understand uh, for us. So let's go ahead here and create a class named analysis, all right? And then we're gonna say def init self and what this is doing is when the class is first initialized it always runs this definite function and this is where any specific uh, things that we pass to that class when we create it so anything that we want to have specific of this class instance we would pass in parentheses when we um, when we create it so you would say like um, a equals analysis and then say where we were passing another term in here it would be like x and we would say a equals analysis, and then this could be like hello. And in this case, x would be hello, and then so our this specific instance of our analysis class would have that specific text associated with it. We would then have a variable in here, say like self.x equals um, x, and that would go ahead and make that hello for us, okay? So we're not doing that though, that's just an example of what that is, so you guys understand that. And now we're gonna go ahead here and put the initializing variables. So these are gonna be self.term for the search term. So we're gonna say self.term equals term. And make sure that we put these in the, um, in the definite parameter area. So we're gonna say uh, self, we've got term, and then our, that's about it for that. Um, we're also gonna have two more variables associated with this class. Those are sentiment and subjectivity. So text blob is going to allow us to analyze the sentiment and the subjectivity of whatever headline we're looking at. So we're gonna say self dot, um, subjectivity equals zero and self dot sentiment equals zero as well. Okay, so now that we've got that, those are the main variables we're gonna be using whenever we run our analysis. We have our search term that we're gonna Google search with, then we have our sentiment in our analysis, which we're going to add up the sum of the first page of the headlines, and then go ahead and divide that by the number of headlines to find the kind of estimated sentiment and subjectivity or whatever search term we put in based on Google headlines. So let's go ahead here and now create a function called run, and this is gonna be what runs our actual analysis for us. So we're gonna say def run self um, to define our function. You always pass self as your parameter when you're defining functions within a class. We're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna say uh, response equals requests.get and then self.url. Okay, so we actually need to go ahead and add that up here. Um, and we're gonna say self.url equals https colon backslash backslash www.google.com backslash search 
question mark q equals and then we're going to open up um, a couple brackets and we're going to put a zero and i'll explain why we're doing that in just a second here and then we're going to say and source um, equals lnms and um, tbm equals nws so essentially these parameters right here so again this is just our standard google search um, right here, but then these parameters, this is going to be replaced by with whatever variable that we want our, our search term to be. And then uh, source is just the news. So we're grabbing news headlines specifically from Google. Um, you can just kind of filter Google searches by, by news, videos, images, etc. So we're gonna say, we're gonna say dot format uh, self, self dot term. Okay, um, let's see here. I'm gonna try to shrink this down here. I'm trying to keep this text um, so you guys can see it easily. Okay. Okay. So what dot format is gonna do is it's gonna replace the zero right here in these squiggly brackets with our self dot term, which again we are defining when we are initializing this class, and that'll be our search term. Okay. So now let's get back to our uh, run function here. And we're gonna say uh, response equals request.get self.url. So what request.get is doing is it's sending a request out to this specific URL here that we specified. And that's gonna get us back um, the page. Imagine as if you pull it up in your browser, but it's just gonna be that raw HTML. It's just gonna be, just gonna be the words that are on the page, wherever they may be um, associated with their CSS classes and specific HTML tags, such as P, H1, etc. Okay, so now that we've got that, um, let's go ahead here and create our soup. So soup, this is just a standard way of using beautiful soup here. Beautiful soup is gonna make it easy for us to parse our HTML document that we get with our request, and then we can pull out the information that we want to then analyze with text blob. So we're gonna say soup equals beautiful soup uh, response dot text. So we're grabbing the text from the response, and then we're gonna say um, html.parser. And what this is doing is this is saying, uh, use an HTML parser to parse this text that we got. And just to show you guys like what that response might be, I wanna print that out for you guys. So we're just gonna say print response, so you guys can get an idea for what's going on here. Um, and we'll just comment this out for now. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is say A equals analysis. And our term is gonna be um, Bitcoin. All right, and now we're gonna say a.run. And what this should do is go ahead and search for Bitcoin in our Google um, result. It'll pull back our response for us and we'll see that text. So we'll go ahead and run that now. All right, and we got that. Um, oh, that's right, I gotta print the text. Okay, so here we go, and there we go. So this is all the raw HTML data that we got from our Google search result. Um, there it is. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the A tags, and then we're gonna pull out the A tags that have the headline text, analyze them one by one for their sentiment and subjectivity, add that all up, and then output that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. So now we can go ahead and bring our suit back here. Um, so after that, we're gonna go ahead here and say headline results equals soup dot find all and now find all this is a method that um, or basically a function that's part of the beautiful soup library that is going to help us pull out whatever data we want from the request that we just got so we're going to say soup dot find all we're going to find all the divs with the class um, of st so essentially uh, i'm cheating a little bit here since I, I wrote this earlier but we're going to go ahead and i'm going to show you guys um, what that is grabbing so we're just going to say um, for for h in headline results uh, print h okay so this will show you guys what we grabbed but essentially each of the um, each of the headlines in the Google result have this class ST and because of that we can identify the tags that we want via, via this ST identifier and then pull those out of that data. So we've got print, um, so yeah, let's go ahead, oh, not, one sec. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead here and run this and what this should do here is print out all those headlines you guys, so you guys can get an idea of what is going on here, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and run that and go ahead and run this on your own computer as well if you're doing this. Um, so we're gonna say, let's, what do we call it? 
um, Python analysis.py. Okay, so here are here's some of the data that we're grabbing. Okay, so this is our big text document that got printed out. Then we've got some of these headlines, and it includes some of the um, data as well that was part of the um, part of the initial like paragraphs of that page. So we've got right here. We've got like right here, these are some of the data. So after a brutal start to the year for cryptocurrency investors, Bitcoin bounced back, blah, blah, blah. Most people love gold. It's simple and emotional commodity, blah, 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 et cetera. So you can imagine these are sometimes highly subjective and um, highly, we'll say sentimental. That's not really the right term for it, but some of them express very positive sentiment while some of them may express very negative sentiment. So let's go ahead and now analyze these, these headlines and see what Google first page Google results are showing us. And why this might be interesting is like, guys, when any, people are Google searching um, hundreds of millions of times a day and people are Google searching for these terms. And who knows if there's all negative headlines one day that might have some kind of psychological impact on investors, but maybe not, maybe who knows, maybe retail traders don't have enough capital to make an impact, but really who knows. So let's go ahead here and say, um, via analysis.py, open that up again, or open, just open it back up in your editor. And now let's go ahead here and say, um, now for each of these um, headlines, we wanna create a blob, okay? So we're gonna say blob equals text blob, and then we're gonna say text.get text. So that's gonna go ahead and that'll grab um, the text out of each of those headlines that is within those tags, okay? So that will grab that for us for further analysis. And then we can go ahead and say self.sentiment plus equals blob dot sentiment dot polarity. So as soon as we create that text blob, it is gonna analyze the sentiment and the polarity by default. Polarity is, a, um, is an integer between negative one and one that is representative of the, um, whether it's like a positive or negative um, sentiment expressed basically. So one would be a very positive sentiment, negative one would be a very negative sentiment and it's in between there on a sliding scale. Um, and then, um, the one after that is subjectivity, which is again, just how subjective is the statement. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys probably know what that is. So uh, we got length, um, headline, results, and there we go. Self.subjectivity plus equals blob.sentiment.subjectivity uh, divided by the length of the headline results. Okay, so there we go. And now that will add that up for us. So now we can go ahead and we can do this. We can say A equals analysis, putting in whatever search term we want there. We can say A.run. And then we can say um, print, print. Um, let's go ahead and print A.term, um, A.subjectivity. We'll go subjectivity. Subjectivity, um, and then we're gonna say a dot subjectivity. And then we're gonna say, we wanna print the sentiment as well and a little identifier for ourselves and then say a dot sentiment. Okay. So now we can go ahead and run this and it should, we'll just style this a little, we'll style it, yeah. Style it a little better here. Um, Okay, and then we can go ahead and say Python analysis.py and um, text name text is not defined. Um, let's see here. It's because we used H. Uh, so we say h.get text and then we try again. Okay. So there we go. Here is our um, overall sentiment and subjectivity here. So it looks like we've got Bitcoin subjectivity. So these headlines are um, more leaning more towards the um, subjective side here. Um, not not a whole, whole completely fact as determined by text blob, of course, but not completely fact, but not completely um, just emotional subjective subjectiveness. Um, and the sentiment is slightly towards the positive side. So from these headlines, we're looking at around a 0.17, which again, if you imagine a sliding scale between negative one and one, that is a slightly positive sentiment with slightly more subjectivity. Um, so yeah, that's what we can gather from that. Um, let me go ahead and pull this back down here. We'll say, so let's go ahead and open that back up here. Now we can change it up a little bit, right? <clears throat> 
So let's go ahead here and import, uh, we'll say from sys import argv. So we can make this a little command line tool, okay? So let's go ahead here and say um, a equals analysis. Um, and we're gonna say arg, argv, argv, um, let's see, two, no, one. Okay, so the way argv works, what that is, is a command line um, or passing arguments in the command line, okay? So when we say, so argv0 is always the name of, this, of the script. So if we say python um, analysis.py, argv0 would be analysis.py, argv1 will be any um, um, command line arguments that we pass after that. So in this case, we're going to run the analysis on whatever term we put in the command line after trying to run our script. So let's go ahead and try this out again and we'll get rid of this print here because we don't need to see that response anymore. And we'll just clean this up a little bit up here. And now we can go ahead here and say, uh, let's try this again, Python analysis.py. And let's just pick something, we'll say, we'll say Trump. Okay, we'll see what happens. So subjectivity is right around, similar to the Bitcoin and sentiment is right kind of dead smack in the middle. So neither positive or negative. So that's interesting. But anyways, um, yeah, that about cleans it up for this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Any questions or comments about web scraping or if you guys need any help with this, definitely leave that below. I'm happy to help you guys out. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be great. Please do subscribe and have a great night, you guys.